We are so excited to have you here. We will be starting in just a few moments. So in the meantime, we welcome and thank you for joining us. And we ask you in the chat to put your school's name and your county and introduce yourself. We'll get started shortly. Good morning, thank you. Thanks for joining us. We're so excited to have you at our virtual 2021 Everglades Teacher Symposium. We'll get started in just a few moments. If you're just joining us, go ahead and write your name, school and county in the chat. Welcome. See some great representation already from Palm Beach County, Orange County, Alachua. Thanks for joining everybody. Miami Dade County, Broward. Very nice. So great to have you all. We'll just give it another moment and we'll get started. Good morning. All right, everyone. Thanks for getting. Thanks for joining us early. We're going to go ahead and get started to make sure that we can wrap up our session in time. So, for those of you that are just joining, thank you again. We really appreciate you spending your morning with us. I hope all of you are having a great summer. We really appreciate you taking the time to learn a little bit more and participate in our symposium. We are here today because you are ready to get your feet wet and take the next step. In this session today, we will be outlining the virtual 2021 Everglades Teacher Symposium and share a preview of today's events, including some Everglades Literacy Program updates for the upcoming 21-22 school year. This year, we organized our first ever two-day symposium, and that was because we wanted to offer teachers and educators as much flexibility as we could. So we have eight sessions over the course of two days, and these sessions will touch on Everglades resources like board games, uh, steaming through the Everglades in the classroom, some civic action pieces, youth adult partnerships, and looking ahead to the future of the Everglades as well. As a reminder, registration is still open for the remaining seven events, excuse me, seven sessions. You can sign up on our teacher symposium tab on our website. One of our team members will drop that link in the, in the chat for you in case you're interested in registering for the other seven sessions. We have a stellar keynote presentation today. I'm so excited for you to hear from her. Uh, we will be joined by Delaney Reynolds. She's an inspiring environmental advocate who's taking action and making waves in Florida and beyond. We thank you all so much for joining us today. Our education team is here to support you in your initiative in implementing Everglades, Ever, Everglades education in the classroom. We are going to go over a few webinar get guidelines. If you have any questions or feedback throughout the presentation, please go ahead and share it in the chat. Make sure you are sending your chats to all panelists and attendees. You should be able to change that in the drop down menu. We will make time throughout the presentation and at the end for any questions that you might have put in the chat. We will be using some polls throughout all of the sessions, and please note that all of the sessions will be recorded today and tomorrow. 
We also want you to share your excitement for participating in the 2021 Everglades Teacher Symposium. On the screen, you see a couple social media handles for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Make sure you're tagging us and following us so that we can see what you are excited about. Uh, and of course, we ask you to hashtag Everglades Literacy, get your feet wet, and take the first step. My name is Bianca Casuto. I am the Education Program Manager at the Everglades Foundation. I've had the pleasure of meeting many of you either in face to face or virtually over this last year, and I'm so excited to open up the symposium. Shortly, we'll be joined by our Vice President of Education at the Everglades Foundation, Jennifer Diaz. But until then, I'd like to start in, I'd like to introduce you to our keynote presenter. Delaney Reynolds is the founder and CEO of the Sink or Swim Project, a nonprofit organization designed to educate, inform, and engage genera the generations who will inherit sea level rise and must work together to solve it. She is also an author, an illustrator, a youth ambassador, and an environmental advocate who serves as an inspiration for civic action for the next generation. Delaney, thank you so much for joining us. The floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. First and foremost, allow me to thank Bianca and everyone at the Everglades Foundation for having me with you today at the fourth annual Everglades Teacher Symposium. It truly is an honor to be here. Allow me to also thank all of you for your attendance and dedication to the climate crisis and environmental issues, including what's going on in the Everglades. I believe that each of us has the ability to change our community, to change the world. And I think that all of you have the ability to inspire your students to do the very same thing. So I hope that when you leave this conference, you'll think a little bit about that and decide to help your students pursue their passions, whatever they may be. Uh, next slide, please. So my name, as you heard, is Delaney Reynolds, and I am a 21-year-old student at the University of Miami, where I just graduated with a double major in marine science and coastal geology, along with a minor in climate science and policy. And I am now a dual PhD and law degree student at the University of Miami's graduate school, also studying climate change and its impact to our environment and society. So today I'd like to tell you a little bit about my climate activism work, my civic engagement work, as well as why I believe that our our climate change crisis is the most significant issue that today's youth generations will ever face in our lifetimes. So on your screen right now is Matheson Hammock, a public park and saltwater swimming lagoon not too far from my home here in Miami. Um, if we could get the video to play, that would be awesome. It's a place where- Hey guys, my... this is the lady from the sink. That's fine. Um, it's I'm a place where- I'm at Matheson Hammock Park right now. so much. So Madison Hammock is actually a place where, like my father before me, I learned how to swim. It's a place that my family and countless others, I'm sure many of you have even treasured for generations. So on the left is me at age two, rocking the Elmo bathing suit and enjoying a French fry. And on the right, the video that we just watched is from the park during a King Tide flooding event. And I'm standing on what used to be a road that sea level rise in recent years, along with Hurricane Irma in 2017, completely wiped out. Um, so NOAA predicts that current sunny day flooding, like the one that was shown in that video, happens about six to eight days per year in South Florida. But by 2030, by the time that I'm about 30 years old, NOAA predicts that we could see 80 flooding days a year like this. And by 2045, by the time I'm 45, we could see 380 flooding events like this, sometimes more than once a day during the two high tides. 
Now, I'm the fourth generation of my family to live here in Miami. So growing up in South Florida, I actually split my time between Miami and a very small 1,000 acre island in the Florida Keys called No Name Key that has just 40 solar powered homes on it. So I grew up learning about sustainability. And in a way, you could say that my life has been surrounded by water. And because of that, I've always had a love for nature and a fascination with the ocean. Ultimately, those passions led me to write, illustrate, and publish three children's books on ecology topics in between elementary and middle school. And it was while I was researching for those books that I first learned about climate change and decided to write my fourth book on sea level rise. So I began by interviewing scientists, business owners, policymakers to learn how they were being impacted and what they were doing about the problem. And the point of the book is to tell these stories so that any lay person can put themselves in the shoes of our residents, our community members, and see that climate change and sea level rise is actually happening here. And to also talk about how we go about solving it. I then took a class in high school called the Academy of Agents of Change at Palmer Trinity School that absolutely changed my life. So the class taught entrepreneurial and leadership skills to each of the students through Outward Bound courses, uh, one of which was a week long trip to the Everglades National Park. And my professor in the class was Dr. Leopoldo Ginos. He's a graduate of my now alma mater, the University of Miami, and a marine biologist. And so when he heard that I wanted to pursue environmental issues for my project for the class, he was elated and basically took me under his wing. Um, I later ended up taking a chemistry class and a marine science class with him. He actually wrote one of my recommendation letters for college, and to this day, we stay in very close touch. So he supported me every step of the way, looked at every PowerPoint that I I created in the beginning, um, proofread some of my very first blogs and helped connect me with a lot of people in the community, um, many other teachers and nonprofit organizations related to climate change. So he pretty much helped launch me into the world of climate activism. So I, I owe a lot of my growth with the Sink or Swim project to him. And then at the end of the course, each student was required to create their own sustainable initiative. So I integrated the book that I started writing about sea level rise and climate change into the course. I took all the skills that I had learned about helping our community and building a brand and ultimately uh, created the Sink or Swim project. So next slide, please. So these are just some photos of my time with the course in the Everglades. We went kayaking, um, explored some of the nature and wildlife there. It was an amazing time. Next slide, please. So the Sink or Swim Project is today a nonprofit organization that aims to educate people about climate change as well as seek solutions to try and save places just like South Florida um, before it's too late. So it was founded on the basis that I felt that young people weren't quite yet aware of the magnitude of what was happening or what we needed to do to solve the problem. And because, like I said, I think that climate change is the most significant issue that our generations will face during our lifetimes. Um, I specifically focus on educating children and working with others to help better our community and implement the solutions that we need to make South Florida resilient um, and a key player in solving the core cause of climate change, which is our fossil fuel emissions. Next slide, please. Of course, uh, as enthusiastic as some kids are about climate change, it's not always the case um, with everyone. So as a result, I've gotten pretty heavily involved with politics. So because of a lack of political action during my lifetime, seven of my friends and I have filed a lawsuit against the state of Florida because we believe that the state is not upholding its technical legal duties to protect our water, land, environment, and atmosphere by burning fossil fuels and releasing large amounts of carbon dioxide. So as a remedy, we're asking that the state and its leaders make laws and plans that will help us cut back and ultimately eliminate our carbon emissions to better our environment. Um, so we filed in 2018. We had our very first hearing a year ago. Um, the judge decided to dismiss our case on the basis that he believed that what we were asking for was a political question and not something he had the authority to rule over, even though Article 3 of our United States Constitution does say that the judiciary has authority to rule over maritime um, cases, which ours falls under. 
So we filed for an appeal um, last month that was also denied. Um, but my friends and I are still very optimistic because our lawyers see a lot of different other paths that we can take moving forward. And we're actually talking about next steps right now. Um, so we're staying optimistic and we're encouraged about where we're about to head. Now, why would young people take such actions to sue their governments? Well, the reality that we face for our future requires us to think boldly and to be aggressive. A lot of people are more concerned about protecting antiquated technologies, fossil fuels, than they are about protecting our future. So of course, none of us ever expected to sue anyone over anything, especially at such a young age, but we believe that we're running out of time and we have to do everything possible before it's too late and we're forced to watch our planet burn, sink and die. So there's good news. We've gone through a major societal shift before and we can do it again. So of course, none of us travel around by horse-drawn buggy or wagon, but if it were the 1700s, that was the state of the art in transportation and is exactly how we would have traveled. If it were the late 1800s to early 1900s, chances are you might get around in a new invention called an automobile, like the next slide. And I suspect that a lot of the same people who made carriages or wagons or cared for the horses that pulled them had to find new jobs in the new innovative automobile industry. And now hopefully before long, in just a few years, I think that most people might be driving cars like the next one, um, which are powered by a battery. So people adopt it and transition. And that's the exact same thing that we have to do with the energy industry. We have to shift our society from one based off of fossil fuels to one based on renewable energies. So how do we do that? How do we cut back our carbon emissions? Well, another great example of this is solar power. Um, so next slide, please. Scientists predict that 50% of Florida's energy needs, half of our energy needs could come from the sun by 2045 if we were to start taking that goal seriously. So after learning about a few ordinances in California in three different cities, including San Francisco, I thought it would be a really great idea to do something similar to that here in the Sunshine State, um, as we're known. So I wrote a letter to about a dozen mayors in South Florida asking if they would be interested in implementing something similar. Um, and the mayor of the city of South Miami, Mayor Stoddard, was the very first to respond. So he and I got together and began to write our very own law. About a year later, South Miami became the very first city in the state of Florida and Florida the second state in the United States to have a law that requires that any new construction of a home or material renovation of an existing home must install the maximum amount of solar panels on their roof. So while I can vote now, like I said, I'm 21, I didn't yet have a vote when I helped Mayor Stoddard write this law and implement it. I was 16, 17 years old. So if any student, if any child, or anyone of any age really wants to create a law, whether it's regarding solar or something completely different in their own city to help make our planet a more sustainable place, this is something that anyone can do regarding any sort of topic that they're passionate about. So it starts with reaching out to local politicians, mayors, commissioners, sharing your ideas and getting involved. So another way that I've become involved in government is on a global level. A few summers ago, I was asked to speak in front of the General Assembly um, comprised of leaders from all over the world at the United Nations on behalf of the Everglades National Park. So Superintendent Ramos asked me to attend um, and I was joined by about 30 other children and we talked about a pledge that we created called Our Ocean Pledge. So we asked all the dignitaries and excellencies to sign it and to pledge to keep our oceans safe and protected for future generations. Um, next slide please. So here, for example, is Prince Albert II of Monaco, an actor and United Nations Environment Goodwill Ambassador, Adrian Grenier, signing our pledge. Um, so of course, this is something completely crazy and it was a tremendous honor, but it shows that as long as you keep working on something, more people are going to listen to your voice and more people are going to give you a platform to share your ideas and your passions. Um, so always encourage your students to continue working no matter how many obstacles they may face. Next slide, please. So as I conclude my comments today, allow me to take you back 
to Matheson Hammock one more time. As much as I love the place and places just like it all over South Florida, I do hope that the day will come when sea level rise does not threaten our region's very existence, of course. I would welcome the opportunity to work on something other than filming videos at dawn on a Sunday, like the one that I showed you earlier. And as much as I love the magazine, I would be happy to not spend the day in a dress, climbing in the mangroves and swimming in the salt water during a National Geographic photo shoot just to bring awareness to our climate crisis. It would be great to not have to do those things. But I will continue to fight this fight for as long as I have to. And I would encourage all of you to fight this fight with me and with your students to not give up hope, to realize that, of course, we will have setbacks. But what we're fighting for is far too important to give up any solace of hope. Next slide. All over the planet, youth are standing up. They're using their voices to speak on behalf of our Earth because we're fed up. We're tired of the inaction. And that, to me, actually gives me the greatest hope for our future. Hope that the youth that we see all over the world, um, that your students will one day replace the deniers in power, implement fantastic, innovative projects, and will finally see progress in the right direction being made. Next slide, please. So I want to encourage every one of you to continue fighting, to continue to have hope, no matter how dark things are on a given day, and of course, to continue to support your students. I mean, we don't really have a choice. We have to protect these special places. If we don't solve this problem, then places that we love, just like Matheson, Miami Beach, the Florida Keys, the Everglades, will disappear. And they'll be lost forever, become extinct. My children, your students, may never get to learn to swim in a place like Matheson. And to me, that's unacceptable. So thankfully, I'm positive that if you simply pursue your passions, if you're willing to truly make sacrifices, encourage the youth of today to keep fighting, support them and fight alongside them, each of us can make a difference. No matter who you are, where you're from, what your age is, or what your challenges may be, everyone has a voice. And my it's my experience that people will listen to you. So thank you again for having me here today. Thank you, Delaney. We really appreciate your time. If anybody has any questions or feedback for Delaney, please go ahead and put it in the chat. While we are doing that, I want to make sure that I address really how inspiring your story is, not only to me and to our team here at the Everglades Foundation, but to many of the teachers. And I'm already seeing some incredible feedback on the slide as well. You have one teacher saying that uh, empowering young people is what we strive for every day. Absolutely. Teachers go into the classroom because they want to make a difference, and you help that as well. Thank you for all you do. Outstanding role model. The future is bright. I really couldn't agree more <laughs> with all of those statements. Statements. Um, many of us know what it's like to have a passion and to take action on it. You've been an environmental advocate and a leader in civic action from a very young age, and I'm certain that the world is in better hands with you leading the way. So while your passion is rooted in addressing the, the impacts of sea level rise and climate change, we want our audience of teachers and educators to know that teachers and students can use their passions to address other environmental issues like invasive species, water quality, water pollutants, and everything in between. Uh, just knowing that you can make a difference in and out of the classroom is incredibly important for us to point out. And I think that you are a great example of that. So, we have another question that's going in the chat here that I want to point out to you. What would you say to students who feel it is hopeless and are somewhat depressed about the future? That's a fantastic question. And this is something that I think about a lot. So working on climate change so much, it's a huge topic. There's so many issues correlated to it. And it gets really hard to think about sometimes um, because you can't solve everything, of course, um, especially by yourself. So what I would say is, yes, it's a big topic. Yes, it's very scary, but there are plenty of things that we can do to be helping, even if it's little things. If everyone did little things, it would add up to a lot of things um, and we would make a huge difference in our community. So that something like that would be like recycling. Um, someone might say, I'm recycling one plastic bottle. What is that going to do? Well, it's not going to end up in the ocean. Um, so if everyone did that, of course, that's a great thing. Um, but something that I like to think about when I particularly get 
kind of down in the dumps over climate change is, like I said, I have a lot of hope for the future when it comes to our youth generation. So I like to take a step back and look at my peers and the awesome work that they're doing in the community because it reminds me that I'm not alone, that I have a bunch of friends who are also super passionate about climate change, who are also helping to implement amazing solutions that we desperately need all over South Florida, working with teachers at UM, working with high schoolers or different nonprofit organizations. And it shows me that while right now it seems like there are some setbacks, there's a lot of hope for the future. Um, I think that we have a very bright future in the fact that there's so many kids, including your students who might be feeling a little sad about climate change at the moment, um, who are ultimately going to take over. And I think that we absolutely have the ability to implement the different solutions that we need. And I think that we really will. Um, so just remind them that they're not alone. Um, there's a lot of people who are on their side. And I think it's more people than there are deniers. So it's a good thing. Great, great answer there. Another question for you. So let's take it back a little bit more local. If someone comes to you and says, why should I care about the Everglades or what can I do to help protect the Everglades? What would your answer be to something like that? So. Great question. So first and foremost, the Everglades National Park is the only habitat of its type on this planet. There are animal and plant species that live there that you literally cannot find anywhere else in the world. That alone, full stop, should make someone want to protect it. I mean, that's incredible that we live in a state where there's a one of a kind environment. Um, and because of that, we should protect it. Now it's also super low lying. It's like one to two feet above sea level. So of course with rising seas, you get a lot of saltwater encroachment. It's already an issue. Um, there's already a lot of pollution because of agricultural runoff. So it's definitely something that we need to protect. Of course, working with the Everglades Foundation is a great way to start, a little plug there. Um, but there are a lot of other nonprofit organizations that are also associated with the Everglades that you can get involved with. Um, and a great place to start, of course, is teaching your students the importance of the Everglades to our environment. It plays a key role in helping basically Florida's entire environment to function. It provides a lot of really important resources to us. Um, so starting with your students, educating them properly, and then um, just getting involved with some nonprofit organizations is a really great place to start. I love that. And this is the, the perfect audience to hear that because the teachers that are participating today are passionate about the Everglades, motivated to teach about it and to help make a difference. We have some teachers that are asking how they can find your books and other resources. Can you share a little bit more about that as well? Sure thing. Um, so if you visit my website, miamiseerise.com, you can find all sorts of stuff. Um, it's a very populated website. It's got a lot going on, um, but you can find my books there and links to all of them. You can also find them on blurb.com, um, which is the website that I use to self-publish them. You just look up the titles. Um, so the first one is called My Animal Friends of No Name Key. The second one is called My Fish Friends of No Name Key. And the third one is called My Bird Friends Around No Name Key. Um, so I cover all the animals, <laughs> um, but that's that's where you can find them and a lot of other things. Um, yeah. Great. And we have also some teachers wondering, when can I meet you? When can I introduce you to my students? Tell us a little bit more about what you offer, uh, whether it's face to face, virtually and other resources as well. Yeah, of course. So I over the pandemic, I've been doing a lot of lectures and presentations just like this one and to classrooms via Zoom. Um, but I'm also now doing in person presentations as well. Um, I'm fully vaccinated if that matters. <laughs> um, so I the, the presentations that I give to students typically cover the science. So I share real science from the Union of Concerned Scientists, NASA, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Um, so I don't dumb it down in any way. I want them to know the science and how it works. Um, and then I talk about implications. I show the video that I showed y'all to a lot of students um, just so they can kind of understand what we're seeing. If maybe they haven't seen sea level rise and flooding themselves, I want to show them what that looks like all over South Florida so they can understand the gravity of what we're facing. Um, and I talk about the future in that case, what it may look like. So predictions going forward. 
Um, and then, of course, I end with solutions. So general things that anyone can do and very specific things that students can do in the classroom, in their community, working with political leaders, working with their parents and teachers, different things like that. So I cover all of that and I am more than happy to set up the time to talk with your students if you're interested in that. Um, you can email me, Delaney at MiamiCRise.com uh, and you can also get to my email through the website as well. Wonderful. And we will be posting all of Delaney's resources on our website as well for you, all of the teachers in attendance today to know how to contact her, find her website and how to email her. The chat has so many questions asking, do you come here? Do you go there? When can I meet you? So uh, we really appreciate it. And I want to point out one comment from a teacher here that I think really sums up a lot of what your message is. So uh, Maureen wrote in the chat saying Climb, climbing a mountain requires one step at a time. And I think you are living proof of that from a young age you knew what you wanted to do and you started to address it and you know you didn't go to the UN as a 10 year old you worked your way up there you worked your way up to start your nonprofit to provide legislation on solar panels and so truly you are a, an inspiration to us and we really thank you for joining us today um, I want the teachers to join me once again in the chat and congratulate Delaney on her successes and for being a wonderful keynote today um, during this opening session thanks so much Delaney for joining us we really appreciate it and i can't wait to see where you end up and watch you move forward in your career thank you thank you so much for having me and thank you to everyone in attendance also hi dr Ginas. i saw you in chat <laughs> how special is that that you're a high school teacher who really influenced you he's here today so um good to see you leopoldo thanks for joining and you did a great job with influencing delaney here we are today so full circle we love to see that so thank you thank you everyone thanks delaney We really appreciate Delaney's time. Thank you everybody for being so engaging in the chat. We have a couple more minutes left in this session. Uh, we will now be joined by Jennifer Diaz, our VP of, of Education, who will share some fun program uh, updates and other resources for you to bring back to the classroom. Jen, go ahead, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bianca. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. We have made it to symposium. Um, it seems like it took a long time to get here, but we've had an incredible year uh, despite living and teaching in a pandemic. And I can't thank you all enough as we've done in the past for all the work you have done to keep Everglades Literacy alive, to keep Champion Schools driving um, through your culture and in your classrooms, whether it was virtually or face-to-face. -face. Um, we are excited to be here today and can't wait to share all of the fantastic sessions that are about to come over the next two days. No, no matter where you are on this journey, the theme for this year is take the next step. Our world urgently needs transformation. It is the next generation that will inherit and face these environmental challenges. This is a defining moment for education and we as educators play a pivotal role in ensuring that environmental education plays a daily role in our students' lives. We cannot wait for large curriculum and policy changes. And we recognize that not every school can transform into a nature-based school, but there are steps every school, every classroom can take to improve their learning environment and to teach kids to care deeply about their environment. Our planet depends on it. So today and every day, I ask you to take the next step in your Everglades journey. Teach a lesson, add a sustainable STEAM project, become a champion school. Use the resources you learn over the next two days to implement a lesson. Integrate civics and take action into your classroom. Just take action and just take the next step for the next school year. I'm gonna hand it off to our incredible high school committee that will launch this Take the Next Step for the next school year. Us down here in Florida, water is everything. Over 9 million people get their water from the Everglades. Protecting our waters and educating people on the importance of water conservation is vital to Florida's future. That's why here at the Everglades Foundation, we urge you to take that first step. We know the first step is always the hardest. But the road to restoration is never easy. We need you to step right in and help us protect our waters. Our oceans. Our lakes. 
our estuaries, our rivers, our water. It's not a one person job. So that's why we want you. We want you to join us in our mission to save our water. Find out how you can get involved in your local conservation efforts. And join us here at the Everglades Foundation. Take that first step. That was our newly launched high school leadership committee from students from across the state really doing great work to leverage their environment and their peers. Uh, we look forward to a really exciting year with our high school students as well. You know, just as a reminder for anyone who is new here, our environment education program is a place based educational program that connects students with the Everglades and how to be great Everglades stewards. Um, this year, we'll be introducing teachers to the value of youth adult partnerships and civic action to address environmental issues of the Everglades. Um, and a lot has changed since we've met in person in 2019. We have a few new resources to share with you on what's new and what the and what's new with the Everglades literacy program. Uh, you know, despite being virtual, we have been able to really move and you guys have been able to leverage lots of our, our resources. We hosted 22 Everglades literacy trainings for 454 teachers from 15 counties. If you want to teach your training, whether it's virtual or face to face, request it and you can look at your chat request it at everglazeliteracy.org and get involved and we will put that in the chat for you as well. Um, classroom presentations, we are still doing virtually. We will, lead, we will launch this next school year in a blended model. So please, uh, you can depend on us for both face-to-face -face and virtual needs um, for the next school year. Uh, we have achieved over 100 of those classroom presentations. And congratulations to our Everglades Champion Schools. We designated 30 schools this year from eight counties. We piloted a new high school champions in action program, a new middle school champions in action program. And those middle school and high school applications are open. Alicia Torres is on this chat, who is the manager of our champion schools program. So if you are elementary, middle or no high school students, all of those links are in your chat to start becoming engaged and take the next step. Also, our bite-sized learning resources, our team has created over 50 of them. Classroom learning centers, you can use them in, homework, daily activities. So they're still important. They're still great for next school year. You can supplement your, your regular teaching and our lessons with these resources. And so they will stay alive and up on our website. Um, and we will continue to grow as the needs are requested. And you let us know what else you need in terms of these bite-sized resources to help supplement um, teaching and learning for the next school year. You know, we're integrating lots of opportunities for our champion schools and for our trained teachers. And one exciting one this year is if you're not familiar, we have a challenge coin for all of our champions um, every school year. And while we designed it in house this year, we launched an art contest. Um, it was a theme that was only one Everglades. And we received almost 400 design submissions from K-12 students across the state of Florida for the 2021 coin challenge. Each design reflected the beauty and uniqueness of the Everglades. This is the winner, Carolina Ruda from eighth grade from Literacy Leadership Technology Academy in Tampa. And all of our students and community champions will receive this coin this year. And we will launch another art contest. It was so well received. And we love just showing off some incredible artists within our communities and across our state. And you can see the other um, runner ups as well. They were also absolutely fantastic. Again, while we're asking you to take the next step in your classroom, we have also asked our families at the dinner table to take the next step, start having conversations about their environment. And so in order to lead that, we reached out to families to teach about and expand our Everglades education at home. Topics included Everglades myths and misconceptions and exploring the Everglades watershed. We will continue with this series. Uh, we look forward to meeting families in their homes on during the evening, during dinner time, or they can watch a recorded session of it. New and exciting on the horizon, our team has been working on 
climate change. There is a new framework for our lessons and a number of lessons that support that framework. So look out for that climate change, all nature is science um, and science-based, but also we do what we've done with our, our standard curriculum and made sure that you can do it across curriculum. I had a good question. Do you have your resources for parents and Spanish? That's a great question. And yes, we are working on it. Um, we are translating the we're translating the pieces and the resources that go with family nights. Now we're just trying to figure out how do we translate the actual um, YouTube link. And while YouTube does that for you, you want to make sure it's accurate. So yes, we will be translating to Spanish um, and Haitian Creole to come. And lastly, do not miss out on resources on the website. Some fantastic field observation resources have been, have been added. So depending on how field trips look for next year, know that you still have these very engaging interactive pieces on our website, Earth Odyssey 360 habitat videos, um, live bald eagle cams, backyard glitches, and more to come to keep you engaged and connected to your environment. And lastly, thank you for our incredible sponsors and partners that have really helped us to grow our website resources, support our teachers in unimaginable ways. We had office hours this year where you can log in and really get one-on-one -on -one connection with our team. And um, I think that really helped our teachers. I hope it did. And please let us know what else you need from us. We are ready to, to move into next year and provide you all the resources you could possibly need to be as successful as possible. We encourage you to share our resources with your teachers, students, and families, and your community. And thank you for your shared interest in this incredible treasure that is America's Everglades. Please enjoy the rest of your symposium. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Delaney. It's been a wonderful opening session. So I do want to wrap us up by saying that uh, you can see all of the resources that we've been mentioning in today's session available on our website, www.evergladesliteracy.org. That's where you can go to stay connected with us. All of the sessions of part of the symposium will be recorded and posted and available on the website. Give us a few days to turn that around, but you will have access to everything. And you will also receive a follow-up email that includes information about how to receive professional development points for attending the symposium if your district allows it and a, cert and a certificate of completion for attending this session and every other session you attend as well. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kim Gooch. I'm the program coordinator. I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, so for every session, um, including this one, we have a very special giveaway. Uh, so I am going to put it out. And the winner is Summer Scarlatelli. Congratulations, Summer. Um, you will receive an email from us letting us know or letting you know about your, um, your prize, what you won, and uh, when we can ship that out to you. So uh, congratulations, Summer. We're super excited. Uh, thank you for attending this session. And uh, there will be giveaways for every session. Uh, so stick around and hopefully you'll get to win something. And speaking of our next session, be sure to register and log in for session two, explore Everglades habitats through Swamped in the Glades board game. So that will start at 10 a.m. and go until about 10.45. Uh, so this is a really fun way to get involved with board games in the classroom and participants are eligible to request this free, fun, interactive classroom resources. Uh, so we'll stick around for a little bit. Happy to answer any questions, uh, but thank you all so much for joining us today.